Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode from our 1.19 series where we are exploring the wild update. In our last episode, we worked on decorating our giant axolotl pond and we decorated two more levels within our cozy bastion. In today's episode, I want to work towards trying to get that blue axolotl. So we're going to be breeding up a ton of axolotls in our new axolotl pond. And I also want to add a giant axolotl head to kind of make a decoration here since this will be our axolotl pond. But the other thing I want to do today is make a mushroom windmill. And finally, give ourselves a banner. Now where we are going to build this new mushroom windmill is actually going to be right by where our animal barn is. I think this spot right at the top here is probably going to be the perfect spot because we can have our windmill so we can have lots of crops ready to give to our animals. So we're going to clear out this little space on top of here and get working on a windmill. We have our area for our windmill all cleared out. So we're gonna build the windmill right here. It's gonna go up into the air and I'm excited for it. But we're gonna collect a bunch of resources, but let's outline this first. And now this is a good shape because this will be the entrance. I think this is gonna be great. Now we just need to start collecting a bunch of resources for this and our doorway is going to go right here to enter it. I think this will be good. So let's get resource collecting. One bone, my lovely friend. Well, this is great. Hello, welcome to the family. I have a dog that looks just like you. Their name is Sunny. And uh, I think we need a name for you too, don't we? All right, guys, you know the drill? Comment below what we should name this new doggo. But now that we have this little guy, I want to get them a different colored collar. And there we go, a nice little pink collar for our new dog friend. Now, let's move them up here so they can kind of uh, protect us and watch us while we finish out our little mushroom windmill.
And just like that, we have the exterior of our little mushroom windmill, and I think this is so cute. You can tell in the time lapse that I changed some of these from white into red, and then mixed in some red wool with the mushroom blocks, and I think this looks so good being all red. It does kind of blend in a little bit at the top, but luckily there's enough of a difference with the polka dots and the red wool that it does look pretty good to me, and I'm very happy with it. On the sides, we added kind of those mushroom roots so it does look like it's kind of growing there's more of a base giving it more vertical and dimension added a bunch of vines and we added some slabs and some just full blocks and some stairs along the edges to just smooth it all out and I think it's pretty good Next, we need to work on what we want to do with the interior. This is pretty tall, so not only can we put stuff in this bottom floor section, but I'm kind of thinking we'll be able to put something upstairs here too, and it could be a storage room, it could be anything we want it to be up here, but there is so much space to do something fun up here. So, let's get working on the interior. And then, since this is gonna be a windmill, we need to get some crop fields set up all around this area as well. And we're gonna decorate the path leading up to our little windmill. So, let's get into the time lapse, doing the interior. After we had all of our crops planted, it was time to grab some bees to be our resident pollinators to our windmill. Planted some flowers, made sure to breed up the bees so that we don't need to travel as far to get more of them. Then began traveling around our area, putting bees on leads so that I could bring them back to our windmill area. Which this proved to be a little more challenging at times than I thought it would be. But we managed to get total bee location advancement for getting three bees inside a nest with silk touch. 
and then we started breeding them up and making more little bees and this adds so much life to our area by just having some bees around. Next, it was time to work on the path up to our windmill. I just used some dark oak slabs and then used some rooted dirt and coarse dirt to kind of break up the path blocks as the main block that we have. Next, we added a bunch of lanterns around the area, just dotting them around the path leading all the way up to our windmill. Coming outside of our house, we saw a wandering trader and they had some goodies that we wanted to. So I grabbed some emeralds quick and then flew back to trade with him. But instead of just leaving, this wandering trader decided to get up to some trouble. Excuse me, sir. You are not supposed to be in my house. This is my house, not your house. Now please leave. That, that's the opposite of leaving. <sighs> Uninvited guests, I tell ya. Okay, yep. Just uh, go out the door. No, okay, are you just exploring? Like checking out my house? I, I want you to just leave. Can you just leave? No, that's that's not le- Huh, weird. He just vanished. Strange. All right, it is time to show you guys the windmill. So you'll already start to see little hints that there is some form of crop fields up this way because we've got some wheat and potatoes and carrots around here just kind of along the sides added some different crop patches to make it look all cute and nice made a border to kind of edge it all in with some lamps as well some lanterns and then we come up and see our lovely windmill. But let's put on some shaders. And just like that, there is our windmill and it looks so good. I added some beehives and bees to pollinate all of our crops circling our windmill and I think it looks so good. We've got just some cozy decorations on the outside of our windmill, lots of hay bale stacks and vines and glowberries. And then here's the windmill itself. And I think this looks so good. And from further away, this is what we have. And I absolutely love the mushroom blocks and wool to texture our little windmill blades. I think this looks so cute. And you can kind of tell we have a little bit of a quartz hobbit hole entrance. There's some accent blocks of the mushroom blocks from the inside peeking out through the white mushroom blocks. We use a lot of bone blocks for this. And I think it looks amazing. Now let's go take a look inside. Okay, and on the inside, lots of vines, chests to store all of the different windmill related items, all of the crops, lots of just decorations. I scattered some seeds and some carrots on the floor. Around the side is the ladder that goes all the way up to the top. So now it's time to climb up to the top and show you guys what I made up here. We've got a little bedroom set up. We've got furnaces, but this is mostly kind of like a storage room, living quarters area for someone to just come and stay that's going to be taking care of our windmill and kind of our beekeeper because we have a lot of bees around our windmill as well. But we just used a lot of barrels. We kind of just made some seating arrangements right here so you can sit down, read some books, document the best practices for taking care of the windmill, and we're able to store all of our different crops in these barrels as well. But this is what we have inside our little windmill and of course, a spore blossom for the particles. Now that we've completed our windmill project, it's time to go breed up some axolotls. So we went off for an adventure to find a lukewarm ocean to find some tropical fish. And what would be any adventure without a little bit of distractions? So we came across some drowned ruins and looked through the chests there, grabbed some of the blocks from them, came across a geode and dug our way to the center placed some torches down inside it, and then I realized it had tons of mobs in it that were trying to kill me. While I was eating some food, a creeper even swam up the water stream to try to get to me. So after that interaction, I just noped right out of there. Finally came across a lukewarm ocean, started grabbing a few tropical fish quickly before we flew over to the village to go to sleep. Upon my arrival in the village, I realized it was teeming with mobs, skeletons trying to shoot me, I took on a baby zombie, and then realized I had a zombie horde following me, which I had no idea this many could spawn so quickly in an area. I was very thankful for the iron golem, so I just kind of, you know, let him uh, take care of them. I tried to help the iron golem a little, but mostly I just let him take care of them all. Reinforced the iron golem since he was such a good protector, and then took a nap. Once I got up, I noticed some coal outside, so quickly grabbed that. 
filled up a ton of buckets. And then we began collecting uh, one tropical fish after another, filling up our shulker box with them as we went, grabbing some more fishies, filling up more buckets, grabbing more fish, dropping them off in our shulker box, and we repeated this for a while. After what seemed like forever, I finally had my shulker boxes full of tropical fish, so I grabbed all of my stuff and started flying back home. Swan dove into the pond and managed to hit one of the lily pads set up all of our boxes of tropical fish, and then it was time to go and grab our axolotls, brought them back over to our area, grabbed a bunch of tropical fish, started setting the axolotls free, and then it was time to breed them all up. We had a random wandering trader stop by, checked what they had, but it was nothing useful. And so we just bred up axolotls. Then we repeated this process for also what felt like eternity, but you know, eventually we will get a blue axolotl, at, at least I hope so because this, this takes a very long time. After quite a bit of time spent breeding these, waiting for them to grow up, breeding those ones, and continuing that cycle, we still don't have a blue axolotl. I know this takes a while, but I just wanted to kind of start the process of trying by the end of this series to get a one. So we're gonna take a break from breeding axolotls and we're gonna actually create an axolotl fountain that's gonna kind of drop water into the pond here for the axolotls. So I think I wanna put one over on this side of the pond and probably one over on this side like it's just pouring water into the little pond here for them. So let's go collect some resources for that project and I'll meet you guys back here. A few moments later. We have a problem. So I decided that I'm going to build one axolotl out of more grayer blocks and one out of these white blocks. Now, I have quartz, calcite, and diorite as the block palette that I want to use to build the white one. However, I need to go find geodes. So that is our next little adventure. Found a patch of diorite over by our village and started collecting up all of that. Went off searching for some geodes in the ocean and managed to find herself one, so we dug into that. Discovered that it was also full of mobs, so took care of them one by one, the skeleton first, since they were aiming at us. Then we took care of the zombies and the zombie villager, and we were in. Okay, we found a geode. Let's collect some calcite. Also, did anyone notice? Oh, a drowned baby, excuse you, child. No, thank you. But listen to this, guys. I never noticed this was a thing. You can shoot at the amethyst and it makes different tones. That's so cool. And then it was time to collect all the blocks, so enjoy this Minecraft ASMR. As we were collecting blocks, all of a sudden I noticed a bunch of drowned were coming down the water stream. So one by one we dealt with them and it seemed like more just kept on coming down the hole. And it was a little bit scary, but uh, you know, we, we took care of them and it was fine. Filled up our shulker box and we had enough materials. So we grabbed our box and went back home. Set up our boxes, and it was time for a time lapse. Okay, everyone. We have officially made both of our axolotl fountains. Let me show you. We've got our gray axolotl fountain on this side, and on the other side, we have our white axolotl fountain just pouring water into our axolotl pond, and I think this place is really coming together. There is, however, one thing that will make this a lot better, and that's using some bone meal. serious? Again? What is with pillagers and my axolotl ponds? Like, what do they like so much about all of my axolotl ponds? My first one? My second one? And now this one is getting attacked for the second time. One moment, guys. Thank you. 
What is with my axolotl ponds always spawning pillager patrols? This is pretty crazy. Now I need milk. Luckily, I decided to be smart a while ago and just carry a bucket of milk on me just for moments just like this. So we're safe again. And just like that, with a little bone meal, we have seagrass for all of our axolotls to play in between, and it definitely adds a lot more life to this area. The next thing we're gonna do is work on making a custom banner for our area, and I've found some designs online that are all about mushrooms, so let's go make one of them. Grabbed all our dyes first, some wool, grabbed some more red dye, flew over to our shepherd's hobbit hole to use their loom, placed a black banner, white dye, selected this pattern, added red dye to that, chose this pattern, added black dye to that, and lastly, chose this pattern. All right, this is our official banner, and now I can actually add it onto my shield, which I've never done this before. And look at that, we've got our mushroom shield on us. We are officially a kingdom. But since we now have these little banners, I do wanna put them in places around our base. So let's go do that real quickly. I feel like we have to put one over here by our villager breeder area because we do so much in this area. And it feels fitting to put one to the entrance to our starter base area. So we're gonna put a little mushroom banner right there. And since this dock is one of the first things you see when you come down our riverway, we're gonna place one here as well. So let's put a banner right here in the trees. And with our last banner, I kinda wanna put it in this area as well. So let's say we'll put our little banner right there in our new windmill area as well. Now we've been in 1.19 for a while now, and in this series for a while now, and we are getting to the end of the series, but there are still a few advancements for specifically 1.19 that I have not done yet. So let's go get one of those done now. And I bet you know what we're gonna do next. Okay, here is our meadow. We ready to listen to some tunes? Now playing a music disc in the 1.19 update when you're inside a meadow gives you an advancement. And I don't remember listening to this disc in this world before, so not only are we listening to the disc, but we're getting an advancement. Okay, here we go. We're in the meadow. There we go, we got the sound of music achievement. And if I read this, make the meadows come alive with the sound of music from a jukebox. And I think this is pretty cool. What a fun little advancement. But that is also all the time I have for today. So thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.